Hello. In this third video to accompany the AMSP FM conference session on teaching activities for vectors, I'm going to take a look at some use of technology, in particular, use of the 3D view in GeoGebra. GeoGebra is a free piece of math software that can easily be, either be downloaded or run in the browser. So, in the first example, I'm going to show you how you can demonstrate to students the equa vector equation of a line. So here's a link to the file that we're going to look at and the link's also in the resources. I'll, I shall just follow, uh, follow that link now. And this is in a set of materials that are all freely available in a GeoGebra book for further maths. And this one is Vector Equation of a Line in 3D. So here's the file. I'm just going to expand it to the full screen view. Now, the great thing about this GeoGebra 3D view is we can use the functionality of the screen to try and give a bit more of a sense of 3D. So, for example, if I add a slight spin to the screen, let's have a spin of speed two, that should be good. That allows us to give a sense of what's happening in three dimensions. And on here, you can see that the vector equation is OA plus lambda AB. You can see the blue vector OA. And then here, there is a, a vector A to B. And I can define any point on that line by choosing a particular value of lambda. We can then start visualizing how that's working by changing the value of lambda to get different specific points. So for example, when lambda is one, OA plus one lot of AB will be the vector OB and takes to point B. Back to where I started, this was halfway along the line. OA plus a half AB will take me to this point P halfway along the line. Or I could have two lots of AB, and I'd be just at the top of the screen, just off the screen here, two lots of AB. And it gives a sense that for, for this way of writing the vector equation of the line, any particular point on the line corresponds to a specific value of lambda. Now you can have a play around with that and think about how you might use it with your students, whether you'd use it at the front of the class or get them to explore it. But it allows us to then start asking questions like this. Can the students explain why negative one, one, two plus lambda three, one, one, and two, two, three plus lambda negative six, negative two, negative two describe the same line? So that's vector equation of a line. Once students have got the concept of vector equation of a line, we can use a similar tool to start explaining some other concepts in vectors, such as how do you find the distance between two skew lines? And again, I've got a 3D file that's going to demonstrate this. So here is this dynamic file in that GeoGebra book for further maths. I'll just expand it to full screen again and give the screen a slight spin so we get this sense of 3D motion. Now on here, we're wanting to find the shortest distance between these two lines. The purple line that goes through the point A, 1, negative 2, 6, with direction 1, 2, negative 1. And the orange line that goes through point B with position vector negative 2, negative 2, 0 in the direction 2, 1, 1. Now you can see I can move my points along the line by changing lambda and mu. And I'm wanting to find where those lines are nearest to each other. Well, I happen to know that if I move lambda to 2 and mu to 3, I get a vector PQ that's perpendicular to both the purple and the orange lines. Therefore, if I worked out the length of PQ, that's the shortest distance between the lines. The difficulty is, I knew those values of lambda and mu, in general, you wouldn't know what they were and you'd have to find them. However, that straightforward, although lengthy method, which is based on knowing that this is my general point P and this is my general point Q. So if I subtract these from each other, I get an expression for the vector PQ in terms of lambda and mu. 
the dot product of that multiplied by the vector 1, 2, negative 1 should be 0 because it's perpendicular to the purple line. And the dot product of that length the expression multiplied by 2, 1, 1 should also be 0. I get two equations in lambda and mu, and I can solve them simultaneously to find those values lambda and mu. It takes quite a lot of working, but the whole point of this dynamic view of it is it gives us a sense of where we're going with it. And we can see what we're trying to achieve is if we can write a general form of a vector PQ between the two lines, we can work out specific values of lambda and mu that, mean, that would mean that PQ was perpendicular to both the purple and the orange line. One final nice thing to point out is if you do have any red, blue 3D glasses, there's also a great way of representing this in a perspective that you can see in 3D with 3D glasses by choosing this middle option from the style bar here and this red, blue. Really worth playing with if you can get, get hold of some red, blue 3D glasses. So all the files are in the 3D vector geometry section of the GeoGebra book for further maths, which there's a link to in the pack. If you want more help with using GeoGebra for further maths, you'll see in these further maths conference resources session, there was a whole session on using GeoGebra for further maths. If you look at the materials there, there's some tips to get you started. And there's also an AMSP on demand professional development course, GeoGebra in the Maths Classroom, which is a full self-study course in using GeoGebra for GCC and A-level maths. Hope that's been useful.